What's up guys, Grant Chan here with Rise Magic and today we're doing the follow-up video to the first video we did on how to properly open up and break in a deck of cards with how to properly maintain a deck of cards. Now lots of you guys watched our deck collection video and commented, wow, you guys got a lot of really old decks that still just seem to be in like prime condition. Well, it all has to do with how you take care of it. All right, now this deck of tally hose is roughly about eight or nine years old, still working great. We got the brown ones over here, which are about eight years old. Still pack it great. Not the best fanning, but they never won the first place. It's pretty good fanning. Um, eh. These Salt and Republics are about six or seven years old. These bicycles, about 10 years old. These Dan and Dave's, six or seven years old, still like new. Now when it comes to making your cars last a very long time, the most important thing is how you store them. Now there's two factors that are a part of that. That is temperature and moisture. So the key is when you're doing this is that you want it to be as cold and as dry as possible for the cards. So one tip I've learned, if it's the winter and cold outside where you live, something you can do is take your decks and store them by windows, right? So sometimes like this glass is very, very cold and in the winter it gets very, very dry and not humid. So you can store your decks against the window like that. Or if you had multiple decks, you can you know, stack them up, make it all a little cute, all that stuff. Now, if you happen to live in a place where it's very warm or humid all year round, first off, I'd like to tell you that I hate you and I'm extremely envious of you. But secondly, if I wanted to help you out and say, you know, how do you maintain your deck of cards in that type of environment? Well, the first thing I would tell you is that if you happen to have a fridge or freezer and it's not that moist, sometimes, you know, the humidity in a fridge can be, can be high. But if you're not storing like a pitcher of water in there and it's a very dry environment, the coldness of the fridge, if you pop that deck in there overnight, put it on ice, quite literally, when you bring it out in the morning, it's going to have a lot less humidity in it. And, and it's going to be nice and cold. And it's going to be, ooh, it's going to fan. Everything's going to be fantastic. Now, if you happen to be in a place where it's really, really moist, you know the little trick where you put your cell phone, if you dropped it in water and put it in rice, and it never worked, but they say it will, and your phone will magically be better, and it never works, that will work with cards because they're not electronic. So you pop your cards in some rice, it's gonna suck all that humidity out of them. And you're gonna be in prime time condition. So that's how I would say you properly store your cards, just in a cool, dry place, like medicine. You know how they say cool, dry place? It's all you gotta do, and they're gonna last you a long time. Oh, and uh, if you're putting it in the fridge or freezer, especially the freezer, don't do it too long, you could ruin your cards, but it's just making it cold for a little bit that will help the, uh, the fibers, the makeup, and all that stuff that goes into a piece of paper lasting a long time. Watch this. This is the flick it up, pick it up, patent pending. It's just, just no big deal. You know? Money. Money. Hold up, hold up. I'm getting a phone call. Getting a phone call. It's on sound, so you can't hear it. Yeah, hello? Oh, are you a single female that finds me irresistibly attractive? Happens all the time when I do that move. Yeah, yeah. Peace out. Who's that? Some girl. Was that a single female who found, finds you attractive? Yeah, I had hung up on her because uh, if I had a girlfriend, that would cut into my condemn time. All right, so if you're not storing your cards, your cards are gonna be on your person somewhere. And there's a couple things you're gonna to wanna to avoid because the human body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius for all our non-American viewers. Shout out. Um, so, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to avoid is putting your cards in one of your front pockets. Now I know this is the most convenient and the most casual, and for decks of cards that aren't most expensive like tally hoes or bicycles, I have been caught putting them in our front pocket, but it's not the best for your cards. Because, especially if you're up on trends, you're wearing the tighter jeans, it's gonna be right up against your thighs, and your thighs are gonna be moving around walking, which is gonna generate a lot of heat, and it's gonna warm up your deck, and usually bow them to the shape of your thigh, which isn't that great. So, what you're gonna to wanna to do instead, is keep them either in your rear pocket, which is gonna be a little bit more loose, depending on how much cake you got, or <laughs> 
as well as not gonna be moving around as much while you're walking. Now you just need to make sure to avoid sitting down on your deck of cards, which I have done before, and uh, it usually will ruin your box. So gotta be careful with that. The other option is throwing it in a chest pocket if you have one. That could be either on a shirt or in a jacket. Now this is gonna be a little looser than before, so it's gonna give a little bit more breathing room, as well as being a little bit farther away from your body and closer to the outside world, which is in the winter months, it's gonna be a little bit more cooler. But by far the most ideal option is throwing it in a backpack, because it's gonna be far away from your body, your body heat is gonna be affecting it, it's gonna be relatively still without pretty much anything else going on, and it's gonna be close to the outside temperature, which if you're living in a cooler climate, it's gonna be ideal. So just make sure not to hold any applesauce, mandarin oranges, water bottles that are open that could spill in your, in your backpack and affect your deck of cards. That had this happen to me before and it's extremely unfortunate. So, if the deck is not in storage, if it's not on your person, then it better be in your hands and being put to use. Now how do you make sure your deck is maintained properly when it's in your hands? Well. It really all comes down to doing things right. So if you're doing springs or bridge shuffles, just make sure you're doing them properly. Now this isn't a hard and fast rule, but when you're doing springs, every once in a while, do them the opposite direction. I'm not saying you have to do it 50-50, but any move that bends the cars and bows them, like a bridge shuffle, every once in a while, you know, just get that bow back and get them used to going the other direction too. Stuff like that will help maintain the correct structure of the deck, which is important for it fanning well into its long lifespan. Now, obviously, the more you use a deck, the more its fibers of the cards are gonna break down, and it's not gonna be as powerful and snappy. Like, for instance, this almost 10-year deck, the Tally Hose, when you spring it, it's, you take barely any effort, and they're almost folding in half. They're very soft, but they still do everything to perfection. They fan amazing. So it's really just all about how you take care of them. They might get soft over time, but they're still a fantastic deck. But by far the most important thing when you're handling a deck of cards is how you wash your hands. Now, if you already know how to wash your hands, I recommend clicking the timestamp skip ahead, but you can always learn something new. So, beforehand, I want you to just grab that cold water spigot, turn that on to about halfway, and you're gonna start bringing up the pot just a little bit until it's just comfortable. Just test out that water quickly. Don't wanna burn yourself, and that seems to be a good temperature. All right, your hands are gonna be just a slight bit damp, that's when you're gonna grab the soap. One pump is good for the first half, then you just wanna rub it on there and get your hands nice and lathered up. But don't be an amateur, get the forearms as well, okay? Your forearms are dirty too. Make sure to get those forearms. After you've gotten your hands in the forearms, you wanna take your nails and just kinda of scratch at your palm. This is gonna get the soap into your fingernails and clean those out too, okay? Soft safe service pot. So once you got the nails down, don't forget the thumbs. You're gonna continue to go over there, rinse off first hand, get all of off just on the first go, then go for the other pump. Now your hands are all wet. Alright? You're gonna just really lather them up. Really make sure to kill any germs, get them off of you. Don't forget the forearms, very important. Then you go for the full the rinse off. Once the full rinse off is complete, don't be an amateur and let your sleeves touch the wet uh, forearms. I'm gonna go over to the towel, remove it, and fully dry off your hands. Once your hands are dry, you can feel free to pull up those sleeves again if they're coming loose. Just wear a tank top, show off the guns, who knows? All right. Once your hands are completely dry, you wanna be respectful, whether at your guest house, your own house, or public restroom. 
and fold up nicely that towel. If it's a paper towel, fold it up nicely as well. Throw it in the trash. Get that back on the rack, looking fresh. But then you see the door handle. Since it's probably been touched by plenty of people before. You're gonna wanna just grab, depending on your hand size, two to three squares of toilet paper. Fold it up nicely and grab it like a makeshift oven mitt, okay? So you're gonna go in, latch onto that handle, twist and pull. Take that toilet paper, dispose of it. Actually hit the trash can that time, we'll do it later in post. And then you're out of there to go flourish and perform magic. So if you guys didn't already know these tips and tricks, I sincerely hope you put them into practice. It'll help your decks last a whole lot longer and make them much more enjoyable to use in the future. Exactly. You want your deck to be a DILF. A deck I like to flourish. But yeah, uh, if you like this video, that's exactly what we were going for. We want your decks to age like beautifully, like Matthew McConaughey and age like fine old wine. But if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button. Comment something that uh, would make me smile. Because I need that in my life. We're and, thankful for comments. Yeah. And uh, subscribe to me. Subscribe. Subscribe. And double subscribe by hitting the uh, bell notification because it's Christmas time. Bells are a thing now. And I